This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. I'm standing here with Representative Gary Hopper, correct? Yes. Uh, who uh, just approached me and was asking if I had been doing any coverage of the Jerry DeLama situation. And um, uh, I, I, I'm wondering, um, what's some of the information that is not making it into the press, you know, in terms of the way this has gone down? I mean, was there any crazy stuff that the SWAT team did or other than the raid itself? Or was anything crazy you saw in court? Or Well, would, <clears throat> pardon. Uh, Jerry's been on my uh, show, uh, Rock, Paper, Hang Grenades, a couple of times talking about it. And some of the things that aren't being reported, or may it may be, but uh, with limited coverage, are the idea that uh, Jerry was, uh, sorry, I get problems with my eyes. Jerry was uh, accused of uh, um, having pointed guns at federal law enforcement. The, the fact of the matter is that incident where they, uh, basically the federal government was killing uh, the cows of the, the Bundy's cows. And um, that incident where they were at that confrontation that Jerry was accused of being part of happened two days before he got out there. So the actual incident of Jerry actually pointing guns at federal agents, to the best of my knowledge, actually never happened. Harry's story is that Harry Reid and his nephew, just like most of the people in Washington, D.C., they go there to line their pockets. Harry Reid, I think, went up there a millionaire, and now he's worth tens of millions of dollars just by uh, um, deals like this, where his son-in-law um, sold some property. I believe it was for the Chinese, and they had to take the um, turtles that were actually protected on that property move them over, and that was the Bundy's area where they used to graze their cattle. So the federal government moves in, and, and you can imagine the absurdity of the federal government coming in with law enforcement to shoot somebody's cows. I mean, the whole whole proposition is insane, and the fact that we have people who are brave enough, like Jerry, to go out there and join a bunch of, I guess, predominantly Marines to try to help this guy defend his, his way of life, his, his living, uh, was pretty amazing. Uh, I believe, personally, that Jerry DeLimus was arrested uh, functionally because, uh, more recently, he went out to the, uh, the refuge that was a, in what ended up in the, in, in the news and what really happened. <clears throat> with, um, a bunch of people, now this was in the neighboring state, uh, went in and took over this refuge for uh, similar problems with the Bureau of Dema uh, Land Management. And it is a protest. They took over an uh, uh, unoccu unoccupied refuge uh, building. And um, Jerry went out there because he could realize the optics of it playing out in the press is that these are radical right wing nutcases. And, and he's, he went out there as a friend of many of them and said, hey, look, you know, you guys, you guys got to get out of here because it's not that. The way it's being played in the press is not what you're trying to get at. And so he went out there to try to broker a peace. He told the FBI before he left. He told them when he got there. He talked to the people at the refuge and then tried to negotiate something with the FBI. And he, at that time, when he came back on my show on February 17th, he explained that it was obvious that the FBI had no intention of trying to broker any kind of peace. They were out for revenge for what happened before. Okay? Now, uh, well, I've, I've, I've taken more than your two minutes, so I should probably try and talk to you when I can ask some more questions and tie you down for longer. Okay, but well, just to finish up, so L Lavoy was shot. Okay, uh, they basically had a roadblock set up. Yeah, I've seen the and video. Then they, yeah, you saw yeah. the video. And I think what the FBI is trying to do is convince people that they were out there for peace and they had no other option. But that's really not true. They were out there for revenge, and I think that's why they arrested Jerry, is just to uh, discredit his testimony. Okay. Well, I will have more questions for you later, Mr. Hopper, if I can find you. Okay, so yeah, with regard to the uh, the Jerry Delamas situation, did yeah. you, were you actually at the, any of the court hearings for him? I was at the court hearing... <clears throat> uh, what was it? Not well, it was the Monday before 
last. So it wasn't the first one, but the second one. The second. I right. was at the second okay. hearing, and that was actually interesting because the defense attorney admitted in that hearing that although Jerry was somehow a threat to society and everything else, no. uh, he actually never was at the actual incident. So the, the federal government and the uh, the uh, guys out west actually had to stand off. Was this a uh, uh, the public defender? No. Oh, no, no. I'm talking about the prosecutor. Oh, she said the prosecutor said that he. The prosecutor okay, all right. even admitted all right. that Jerry wasn't there during that. Uh, then he, tr but he tried to make the case that Jerry was a threat to society, even though, if he was such a great threat to society. Why did the federal government wait two years to actually uh, start prosecutions? Well, now, now that's how a, that's a joke. How how were the, the the attendees, the crowd that came to support Jerry? How were they treated by the feds? Fine. Okay. Everybody okay. went into court. Um, <clears throat> I don't even think I, I think I offered to show ID, but they didn't care. Um, obviously. Really? So they let people in without ID? I presume so. They didn't. Well, I also had my state legislator badge. So oh, maybe I see. That. Was uh, irrelevant. I don't know. Do you know if Susan was home when the the raid occurred? Yeah, I believe she was. I had uh, Jack Kimball came on my show with uh, John Heichel and um, and uh, Rock Paper Hand Grenades, and they actually did a show last Wednesday. And uh, Jack, I, I listened to that because I was here voting against stuff. And uh, Jack said, yeah, he got that call, a frantic call from Sue that morning when the feds showed up. So w were they allowed to call while they were still there? Did she have to call after it was all over? Do you know? I presume she called after it was all over, but I really do, don't do, know. Do you know if, they, if either of the Lamases has got any video of the raid? Don't or, know. Or audio? No, I uh, don't. Uh, I, know, I know that Jerry, when he was on my show on February 17th, expected to be arrested the next morning or possibly because he had a meeting at Dunkin' Donuts uh, scheduled with the Federal Bureau of Investigation and when he went there he had other people all set up to make sure everything was videotaped and that's apparently what the federal government really would because the federal government said well we would have showed up but we were afraid for our safety well you know give me a break they live in constant fear yeah yeah, yeah sure they do um, so yeah, so that you, was you all would a bunch too. Of, you did what they do, but uh, do, do, do you have any sense of whether whether it was a no knock raid? Did they bust the door? Did they just knock lightly, I, or I don't. I get okay. the impression they showed up with, uh, uh, you know, fully loaded, you know, loaded for bear. So I don't know if they busted in the door or knocked. I don't I have no idea. Okay, all right. Any sense of how he's being treated at this? I guess it's Stratford. I presume okay. I don't know. But okay. you know, he seemed like he was uh, doing well when he showed up for court uh, last Monday, so he seemed healthy and everything, so I'm sure he's being treated well. Is there any infrastructure set up for easily getting mail to him? or? I would contact Sue DeLamis. Her, her uh, phone number and uh, um, address is up on the state website because she's a state legislator, mm. so all that information is available. I know she needs money to help... Uh, uh, she hired a, a lawyer to start taking his case and try to keep him from being extradited uh, back west, and so it's going to get pretty expensive. And Jerry was her sole source of income. And for people that don't know, I believe it's um, Sue's mother or uh, Jerry's mother is actually uh, got a lot of medical condition is living with them, so it's a huge amount of stress on the family. To what extent does this make you question New Hampshire's? Uh you know, being in the union. I didn't. That hasn't crossed my mind. <laughs> you said it. It doesn't. It doesn't have. Uh, I still think we're part of the union for a reason. If I if I don't ask, no one will. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, I just I just would be so afraid of Canada invading once we were on our own. Oh, those he Quebecois, said, they're yeah, always uh, threatening to cross the border. <laughs> those folks from Montreal back will attack in a heartbeat. But no, I, no, I don't think that's, uh, I haven't given that any consideration. All right, well, maybe, now maybe you can. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you have any video or stills of any of the stuff that's been going on in relation to the situation? All I have is uh, on, uh, like I said, um, rock, paper, hand grenades. I posted it on my Facebook it's a list of all the shows that Jerry was on. Jerry was on in 2014, mm -hmm. soon after he uh, uh, got back from his original visit. He was on Rock, Paper, Hand Grenades February 17th. Uh, you can Google that. It's on YouTube. 
um, and he was also um, this past Wednesday with uh, Jerry wasn't on obviously because he was in jail, but that was with Jack Kimball who has been tightly involved in this whole thing. Now, talking you, to John's uh, representative Heichel or former representative John Heichel. What do you think is the most useful thing the, in, the average person in New Hampshire could do to put pressure on authorities to, to get him free? First get informed. Um, watch, the, watch some of the videos of uh, the Lavoie shooting. Um, watch the video. Uh, Judge Janine actually did a really cool thing that gave the I posted it out on my Facebook, a really awesome uh, video of uh, um, the background information. Why did this all start? Because I think if people aren't informed as to what's really going on, they're not going to have any empathy for Jerry and the, and the stuff uh, Sue and he or, and his family are going through. So get informed first. Once you're informed, you know, start write, writing to Senator Ayotte and uh, Shaheen and and try to get people in the uh, I'm skeptical. <laughs> oh, I am too. I am too. But, but I think I, uh, it's an election year, so they might be a little bit more receptive than ordinarily. Why haven't there been, in, uh, is, to my knowledge, yeah, to my knowledge, there has only been one demonstration in his support, which was some flag wavers outside the, the court at one of the hearings. But uh, why have there been no just demonstrations in general at any of these federal buildings in, in, uh, in New Hampshire in relation to this? I presume it's because uh, in the case of Jerry DeLamus, they've, they've done a pretty effective job, I think, of vilifying him, like the federal government does every time they want to uh, um, attack somebody. They, they make them out to be, you know, horrible, horrible people. I mean, we don't go to, every time we go to war, we got to accuse the person we're going to war of, of you know, you know, having sex with camels or whatever it is, they come up with some story why this person is the worst villain in history before they attack them. And I think they've successfully done that with Jerry. They make, have made him look like a nutcase when if you actually listen to his, his testimony on, on my show on back in um, um, on 2014 and, and more currently back in February, you find that he's completely reasonable and he's just fighting for what he believes is the, the liberty of these people out west. Okay, Gary Hopper, state rep from where? Okay, where? All right, nowhere, southwhere, oh, somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> all right, I'm from southwhere. That's not nowhere. Okay, all right. Thanks so much, Gary. Yeah, take care. Awesome. No, can't do that. Federal agents on the streets of Keene, New Hampshire. They're investigating reports of an unlicensed radio station said to be broadcasting LRN.FM. So why all the fuss? What is LRN.FM? Well, it's probably not something these agents want you to listen to. It's a 24-hour news talk broadcast, all pro-liberty. A true authoritarian free zone. Tune in at LRN.FM to listen or broadcast their signal. LRN.FM Feds don't want you to hear them.